these are some heavy hitters. Here we go. 1,230 watt hours out of this battery and still above 12 volts. That is awesome. Zero. One. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got another exciting battery review video for you today. This time from Lossagy. Lossagy is a brand that's been out for several years. So this is the Group 31 size lithium iron phosphate 12 volt 100 amp hour. So I'm gonna be testing it today so you don't have to. So that's awesome if you saw that comes with the manual and cables. So the Lossagy is already hitting above the others, giving you cables to go ahead and get you hooked up. Comes with two sets of terminal bolts of different lengths and protective caps. I guess they want you to go ahead and use it. So getting you started easy. So while the battery's finishing topping off so I can do the capacity test on it, I'm gonna give you a few quick specs on this unit right here. Of course, it's a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It supposedly has a 100 amp BMS. I'm gonna test that. A mass continuous load of 1,000 watts. I'm gonna test that as well. Maximum charging current recommended between 10 and 50 amps on this model. And they're rating the cells between four and 7,000 cycles depending on your daily depth of discharge, of course. And it's got a waterproof IP grade of IP65. And the weight on it is right at 23 pounds. So lots of energy in a lightweight package. All right, the Elosogy is completely topped off, slam full. Uh, so now time to pull it back down. Okay, capacity test time. Not gonna waste the power. Gonna do a real life test. So here's the Elosogy. Show you all the wires. Show you nothing, no hidden stuff. Right there, there's the shunt. Those are just wires for the display. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed from the Elosogy into the inverter, cause I want to real life. You know, if it cuts off 10 and a half, that's what matters for real life applications. From the inverter down to this Drock DC power supply, I'm gonna feed into the Zendor. Try to get the load right at the same as the other test, around 25 to 30 amps. All right, so I'm gonna flip the breaker onto the inverter. It's gonna power up. And we'll get a voltage off of the display, off of the shunt right here. 13.83 volts at the start of the test. Let me turn the alpha inverter on. But you're not gonna see the little three watt draw because I've already got the power supply pulled in, plugged into the inverter. So there we go, 7.8 watts with the alpha powered up and the drop power supply. Get you a shot of that right there. See, it's powered up. So I'm gonna plug in the Zendor's PV input to this DC power supply. So, so there we go, 25 amps, 333, 334 watts, six watt hours through it already. And let's see how many, how many losses we're getting. Yeah, 249, 250 going into the Zendor. And yeah, we're losing through the MPPT in that, losing through this, losing through this. But hey, better than just burning off his heat. So I'll be back in a few hours. While we're waiting on the capacity test, movie magic here. I'm gonna do the full power pull on the Lossagy 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. Same test, four and cable, energy shunt, resistive load, alpha inverter. I'm gonna pull the battery for 10 minutes to see how the BMS holds up to a big load. So I'm gonna turn the inverter on, let it settle in, and I'm gonna do the resistive load. So begin, 10 minutes, now. That's exactly 10 minutes at 127, 128 amps. Wow, very impressive. 1,230 watt hours out of this battery and still above 12 volts. She is fixing to cross the 100 amp hour or 1,280, there she went. 1,280 watt hours and still at 11.88 volts. We might have us a winner here. 1,324 watt hours. All right, the inverter just shut off on low voltage. 1,329 watt hours of real world usable capacity out of the Lossagy. That's awesome. All right, get one good last look at it because I'm fixing to tear it down. So there she is, she's still sealed up. So now time to find out 
what makes it tick. I've got it most of the way cracked open, so I'm going to reposition the camera so we can look at it at the same time together. Let's see what's going on here so if I can crack this cover the rest of the way off. There we go. Not bad. All right. Wow. Nice. That's two number eights, 200 degree silicone jacketed wires, and then two eights on the positive as well. Terminals are tight. Uh, you remember some of the other batteries have only had like a single number seven and stuff like that going on. This has two eights here, two eights there. So yes, this one is a lot better on the terminal wiring from the BMS and pack up to the actual output. Look at all the nice foam around everywhere to keep it protected. Foam on the top, hydraulically crimped wires. I mean, everything looks good right here. So get down on the epoxy board and see what everything looks like. So I've got the epoxy board removed from the cell pack and BMS so I can investigate everything in it. So look at this BMS as soon as I popped it open. It looks like a JBD BMS. Uh, very, very similar. Now this is a JBD model number minus the first digit, whereas one you'd buy off the shelf to build your own pack would be a SP04S. This is a TP04S. So we're going to assume that this is a custom made JBD BMS with custom specs for lossage. We'll flip you around. I got the balance leads coming in right here. All these connections are bolted. Very tight, no loose nonsense going on. A very thick aluminum heat sink. We got a temperature sensor coming around over here. Now this sensor, it does not appear to have a low temp sensor. This is a high temp pin out port on this JBD BMS. So it looks like we're gonna have high temp, but low temp on these boards are usually right here with the pin out with another sensor. So I will test it anyhow, but it appears that we don't have low temp protection, which they don't claim to have it, but anyhow. So that's interesting to find as well. Nice thick printed circuit board, really thick on this unit right here. And then if we look right down here, we see the little white little thing sitting right there. That is the thermal switch. So that's thermal protection for the BMS right there. And remember the little temperature sensor, it comes around through this wire loom, which is real nice too. A very nice wire loom, very nice constructed pack. This is just a great, great pack construction right here. So the sensor comes through this wire loom and is sitting on top of the cells right here. Nice laser welds on the bus bars, bolted down balance lead connections with machine screws, lock washers, and they even put fish paper, vulcanized fish paper back here behind the machine screws. So there won't be any kind of rubbing or contact on this cell. Just a very nice touch to see to see the craftsmanship the way this is built. Now, as far as these cells, now, of course, most of these QR codes are just manufacturer's tracking codes. Now, this cell, by appearance, it looks just like a GFB cell. The clear relief window, it's got the terminal coloration of a GFB cell. Now, I cannot confirm or deny what cell this is, but if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, the GFB, that's a good cell, probably a custom contracted unit for Lossage, but these are some heavy hitters. i work my way around the pack up here on the top. You know, there's foam everywhere in this unit. This pack is very well protected the way the construction is in this Group 31 size case. We got nice, tight plastic tie band construction on there, very good compression. We've got corner guards right here, which is a nice feature to have. I don't know if we've seen that in any of these batteries yet or not, but that's a very good feature. So it spreads all the compression out along the whole corner of the cell instead of just in the spot where the band goes. I like that. And I'm going to zoom you in. And the cell separators on this one, instead of using epoxy board, they went and used fish paper. So that's nice to see. They used vulcanized fish paper as a cell separator. So I like this pack. This is a very, very nice pack. I've got the sensor pulled loose right here. Now, since they're claiming high temp, I'm going to test the high temp first. I'll start the test and give you the time, how long it takes to cut it off. Twenty seconds. Very good. Twenty seconds. Cool it off and we'll watch it come back up over here on the charger. And there we go back to charging. Very nice. Very quick reaction. Now it's missing the low temp pin out on the board, but I'm gonna try low temp check anyhow. Stranger things have happened. Maybe there's something different on this board, but I don't think it's there, but I'm gonna test it for you anyhow. So I'll hold it here for a couple minutes and see if anything happens. Nope. So overall, this Lossage battery is a very good battery. Very good build quality on it. Professional construction, this is nice. This is put together nicely. Good size wire on it compared to many brands. It's got a nice BMS on it. It's like a thoroughbred. It just takes that load and just runs with it. Same with the sails. 
you're getting more than what you pay for. You're paying for 100, but you're getting above 100. I love when a company under promises and over delivers like Lost You did with this battery. Oh, the capacity is there, the performance is there. But what separates this from being a very good battery between that and an excellent or killer battery, I wish they would have put the low temp protection on this unit. If they have included the low temp protection with this overall just great battery, that had, had something that would be almost unbeatable. And if you could have shrunk the case down to a group 24, you know, that's a couple of things that I would have changed on it. But regardless of not having low temp in the bigger case, I would run this battery. Yeah, I like this one. It gets two thumbs up. So yeah, good job on this one. I wish y'all would put the low temp on, but hey, it is what it is. But if you're interested in this battery, I'll throw a link down in the description so you can check it out. It's got a very good price on it right now. So hope you enjoyed today's video, the test of the Lost G battery. Hope you earned a like from you. If you hit that like button, it really helps the channel out. Questions put in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, I greatly appreciate the description. Until next time, I'll be out here to Grid Don't Go. Thank y'all for watching the Off Mountain Homestead. Y'all have a nice day.